Pickaxe. Hello and welcome to Yomp! Hello and welcome to Yomp! It's Ye Old Movie Podcast. It's an acronym. Do you get it? We are a movie discussion podcast, and who are we? We is me, Simon the Honeydew Man, Diggy Hole Lane. And I am, of course, joined as ever by the especially fragrant and luscious G Star Games. Oh, I get luscious this week, aren't I lucky? Thank you. Yes, hello, welcome to this episode. My name is G, full Christian name, G Star Games, as always. And uh, joined by me is the lovely, wonderful Booth. Hello, it's me, Sophie or Booth. And my full Christian name is none of your fucking business. But we're going to do some film chat. Today, aren't we? Is done? there any spaces in that, or is it just one word? It's just one word. They had to, they, they had to tack on a little bit of paper on the end of my birth certificate. <laughs> Sophie, not on your fucking business, Rogerson. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> so, today, it's a Simon pick. Yay! Yay! We've got a Simon Yay! pick. Um, but it's also a Sophie pick. Really. Yeah, it is um, actually. It's this is. I mean, you're the reason that this film is on my list to begin with. I'm going to take that as a real compliment. It's not about you. You should do. Right. You should do. Uh, today we are talking about Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Ooh. A a fun film. I think uh, I should describe it as that. A fun film. I I think after last week with blowout this is like a sorbet like a palate cleanser right because <laughs> yeah. you know we we went into a lot of details about uncovering like the mystery getting into like the plot trying to like uncover what the fuck was going on with that guy in the the bridal shop <laughs> that's like 15 <laughs> minutes of us talking about that getting real in depth it was a bit depressing and i think in the end we were all a little bit sort of sad and tired and we needed an uplifting fun film to do and i think that's what we got um with alvira mistress of the dark um a a daft camp film i'm just gonna say at the top i think this is the funniest film we've watched on yomp jesus okay sophie what do you think about that that bold statement it's a bold statement. Um, I can't remember the other films that we've watched. So, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah. You can't remember any. Okay. Uh, so, Frankenhooker. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That was Frank boring. Frankenhooker uh, Frank was funny, but it, it didn't have as many jokes. So, Tropic Thunder. Hilarious. It was so fucking funny. No, Elvira is the funniest. Who Killed Captain Alex? I think that's a comedy, right? Uh, Kung Pao. That was really, really funny. Beverly Lufflin, I think that certainly had its funny moments. Shrek. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I mean, if it feels like we've not had like massively hilarious films, some real comedy bangers, you know, on Yomp. And maybe this isn't quite, you know, the funniest film ever made. But I certainly think I, I laughed out loud so often watching this. To be and fair, yeah, I've already watched it before. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it still made me laugh at just some ridiculous moments. Enjoyable. A very enjoyable film. Um, uh, that's it. That's the discussion. We've done. <laughs> We've done it. <laughs> Record time. Uh, I guess I. I guess I should summarize, do a little, a little a brief synopsis. Um, so Elvira is a, uh, she hosts a TV show where they show a horror movie and she sort of, she like shit talks it. 
And she, um, within the first five minutes of the film, gets sexually harassed, quits her job, wants to go to Vegas, doesn't have the money. Turns out her great aunt died. She's inherited something and she goes off to claim her inheritance. And um, there's, there's magic and witchcraft, a cute dog called Gonk. <gasps> um, I fucking love Gonk. A, um, she, she wants to have sex with all the men um, except the, the gross ones. And um, yeah. It's a nice film. It's it's a very tightly plotted film where, you know, things just happen, just bam, 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 you know, you're done, you move on to the next scene. Um, and it doesn't matter about things being contrived in terms of plot because that just adds to, like, the fun. Um, yeah. And it just whizzes along like an hour and a half long film. I, lo- I love that, like, one of the first funny lines that she says is, hey, does anyone know what that movie was about? I'll tell you what it was about. It was about an hour and a half too long. It's, she's, she's got so many good <laughs> zinger lines in this. Like, yeah, my God. Like, there's a lot, there's a lot going on where she's, she's just got the funniest things to say. It's like, it's like the things that I wish I could say as comebacks to people. You know, because I'm just not that I'm not that witty. I'm not that smart. Um, but I laughed quite a lot. Why did you pick this movie? Why did you put this film on your list, Simon? Is it just because it was a laugh? Yeah, I wanted something. I wanted not a a miserable horror movie. I mean, this isn't a horror movie, but it has you know certain thematic elements with sort of the camp horror. Yeah, it's like an Adams Family or like that. It's it's horror like. You know, very American Halloween themed things are horror in which they're not scary at all. They just have the slapstick, you know, the branding of horror on them. <laughs> kind of like, uh, do you remember Saturday the 14th? Oh my God. Saturday the 14th is another really stupid sort of like, the- it's themed, it's all- it's- but it's-, it's just a bit stupid, you know? It's supposed to be a parody, but it, it it isn't really. And yeah. It's a bad film. Real bad. And they made the sequel, <laughs> didn't they, as well? Unbelievably. <laughs> uh, like outrageous. Um, so yeah, Alvira, she's a she's quite a you know, a famous sort of character on the scene. Um yeah. everyone loves her. It's Cassandra Peterson that plays her, right? Yes. She's got a um cracking pair of jugs and she wise cracks um she's slutty i will say the fucking tits the tit gags were getting a little tiring <laughs> at one point <laughs> what? what do you mean tiring just a little bit <laughs> just a little bit like i i appreciate a good pair of tits but it was just like it felt constant eventually but i do like staring at her tits so I did enjoy. So fairly near the end of the film, there's a part of the film where she is escaping a cemetery and the gate is chained shut. And she basically uses her boobs to break the chain, right? Yeah. Did you not enjoy that? I loved it. Her straining, like her her boobs against the chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. I like that, actually. There were a lot of, like you said, a lot of standout, like moments and lines like how's your head which is iconic never had any complaints <laughs> i love that i also love her fucking like belt uh knife thing brilliant she, gorgeous she is iconic i love her so much and yeah i just i think she's fantastic she is an icon 100 percent, and i i'm i'm just glad this film got made that she had this vehicle I've not watched Haunted Hills. Is that a similar film, Sophie? I have not watched it either. Oh, oh. no. Yeah. Sorry We're not about talking that. about the Fortnite um, location. <laughs> <laughs> um, Elvira's Haunted Hills, which is, 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 of course, also a boob joke, right? Yes. If you've got scary tits, yeah. I'm sure it's fun. Maybe that'll go on the list um, at some point in the future. Maybe. 
So what do we talk about here? If we don't want to just go through it scene by scene and we just want to... What about the lines? You can you can go scene by scene. I'm not that bothered. Just so long as we don't okay. linger too much on stuff. I think a lot of people okay. do like the scene by scene. And this one's very entertaining. So I wouldn't... We, we don't need to break the film down like we did blow out so much. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's... I mean, like I said at the, at the top... Um, it moves very quickly. She finishes presenting her show on like local cable TV. Uh, she finds out there's a there's a new boss, a new owner of the TV station. He is a disgusting pig of a man. He he touches her boobs and basically you know says that he wants to to fuck her. And well, I think he even grabs her ass and stuff, and she just like pushes him onto the desk where they're presenting the news and it just smashes into a million pieces. Yeah. Yeah, and that woman's wig goes flying as well, which was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that woman who's, whose wig goes flying is Tress McNeil, who does a lot of voices for things like The Simpsons and Futurama and stuff. Oh, oh my goodness. Bit of trivia already. Mm. Well, I thought we can we can kind of Put some put some driven places, Scott. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Avara, she she kind of quits before she gets fired, and she doesn't care about this shitty TV show because she's got a big Las Vegas show coming up. However, she needs fifty thousand dollars to be able to fund it um, to, for her big Las Vegas break. However, at that very moment, she receives a telegram <laughs> in astonishing timing. Um, apparently her great aunt Morgana has passed away and she has to attend the reading of the will because she's in line to inherit something. Which is so fortunate. Is that timing or what? (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then she has a brief dream sequence where she kind of imagines the reading of the will and it's very funny. It's like a game show. And the guy's like, let's see what you've inherited. A sailboat, a brand new Jeep Wrangler, a dining room suite, and money, lots of money. And I money, don't know like, why flies she, from she the would ceiling. want a Jeep Wrangler because her car is the fucking best. Exactly. What did you think of the car, G-Star? Yeah, I fucking loved it. She's very bizarre in her character. Like, she's very fabulous and very chic and about town uh, but she's got that very goth metal vibe to her so she's she's like and she goes against that trope in a way because she's not like a typical goth metal head but she 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 likes the glamorous (laughs) stuff as well she doesn't like goth at all no (laughs) but that's what i mean she she loves like you know she's like a burger and fries and the colorful house and the things that you didn't, you wouldn't think that she'd the be the valley in. girl. Yeah, the valley girl sort of accent, and mm. I, she is just incredible. I, I mean, I'm not gay, but she is like, I love her. <laughs> mm. uh, Agreed. Yeah, hundred percent. So she she drives towards the the town of. Fall well in Massachusetts in a beautiful car, her convertible uh, T Bird, um, which she's custom fitted. It's black, of course, and it's got of skulls course. and shit all over it. Um, she picks up like this axe murderer guy, and then he's shirtless, and she throws him out the car and throws his axe at him as he I runs enjoyed that. off. Again, this is just within the first few minutes of the film. All of this has happened. Very quickly. Uh, then a cop pulls her over and there's, it's so dumb. He says, you know you were doing 50 in a 25 mile per hour zone. And she says, no, but if you hum a few bars, I'll fake it. And <laughs> he, he gives her a ticket and then she says, I've got to get a new joke. This one's costing me a fortune. She opens the glove box and there's all these other tickets she's been given. And it's like, I think that in, in itself is really good because it's like, she, you expect people to try and get out of things with their with their tits in these things, right? Like, well, use she just the, uses her wit. Yeah, not her tit, her wit. 
and it fails. <laughs> yeah, it fails, but it's it's one of those things like people with big tits are portrayed as like ditzes who try to bimbos. get Yeah, they're bimbos. They're bimbos. But yeah, she she it doesn't work for her. She's she's just got loads mm. of tickets and it's all fucking up. She's smart, she's witty, but it it doesn't work on these these cops every time it fails. <laughs> Um, then she pulls up to a gas station and we get an amazing song about chicken fried steak that's playing. <laughs> and it's batshit insane. It's just a guy singing like a, in a country and western style about chicken fried steak and potatoes and gravy. And it's so weird. And I, I assume it was made for this song because they needed something in the background, some hick rednecky song to play. And it's amazing. Chicken fried steak, all the da, 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 potatoes <laughs> and gravy. It's so weird. I no. want to find a full length version of it. I looked around and there's like, there is a chicken fried steak song someone else has done, which is it's not the same. Uh, it, they actually did like a, a, a sincere song called Chicken Fried Steak. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. I um, was looking for something from this film. There's the bit where she's uh, she 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 inherits a house and she she these the kids in the in the town help her do it up, and she's wearing these really nice like pedal pushers with buckles down mm. the side, and everyone is looking at her ass in them, and I'm looking at her ass yeah. going, her ass does look good in them, and I'm going to try and find a pair of them, but. Just bear in mind, uh, Sophie's not gay. I'm not gay, um, but if I was, I would enjoy looking at her ass. Yeah. Okay. Got a good ass. She does have a really good ass. Mm. And she's you wanted the than, same pair of She's trousers. more than just a great set of boobs. She's also got and a fantastic... a great pair of legs. A great pair of legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, she, she pumps gas and... Uh, the gas station ends up exploding when she leaves, which was nice. That was um, nice. That yeah. guy, that guy, that attendant that did nothing, disgusting, absolutely disgusting man. He does, he like picks his nose. He's it, ugh, disgusting. But yeah, Elvira pulls up to town. Um, everyone like walks out of all their houses and businesses to gawp at her. Um, there's a guy who's like getting a shave when he just walks out into the street and her car breaks down um, quite dramatically. And we, we meet, uh, we meet the, the, the chairperson of the local council, Chastity Pariah is the <laughs> name, <laughs> which is a bit on the nose. It's like a Dickens character. <laughs> <laughs> There's the great line where Chastity says, well, I never... And Elvira replies with, yeah, you never will with those soup cans on your head. Because she's having her hair got, done. And she's got these massive got curlers. Hair rollers. Rollers, that's the right term. Thank you, Sophie. That's all right. So Elvira goes to the mechanic. The um, She gets the local lads to, to push the car to the garage. And this mechanic is just yammering on about local gossip. And Elvira just walks away as he's talking. <laughs> and I thought I was so funny But then he notices she's gone And he says, nice tits <laughs> Yeah, yeah that made, that I, made loved, I loved it I loved it so much <laughs> Oh my god there's, just, there's so many good little bits That you you start out thinking like Oh, you know this Is this really necessary? And then they bring it back around <sighs> Hilarious she goes to the local hotel and there's a, a miserable couple that run the place. Uh, a real harridan of a lady and her, her wimpy husband. And they have a, a granddaughter that's not they're looking actually after. Her husband. That is her son. What? What the old man? I think so. Because Stop. I what? He looks older than she does. Yeah, but when they're talking to Robin the little yeah, girl right. it's it's his that's her grandma and then there's but some... that's her father yeah no i don't know there was something in it that made me think oh that, yeah that's what that is i don't fucking know i can't that's remember weird maybe that was a joke 
And it, and I just missed it. Maybe it was. Um, or Sophie might just be wrong. Let us know in the comments. Which is more likely? <laughs> uh, she learns that the only fun place in the town, the only place that the kids can go to to hang out, is the bo- the bowling alley. And this is where we meet Jeff Conaway, who is Kaniki in Greece, and a security officer in Babylon 5. Wow. Mostly famous for that role in Greece, though. And again, we get a great line where um, Alvira asks for a Bloody Mary, and the waitress there says, No hard liquor served past six, no, past eight o'clock. Do you want a virgin? And Alvira thinks for a moment and then says, Maybe, but uh, I'll have a couple of drinks first. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> for fuck's sake. Um, and then she's sexually harassed by um, Jeff Conaway's character and his mate, and they are gross. Um, but then she picks up their beers with both her hands and just pours them simultaneously into their laps. Because he asks for a blowjob. Yeah. Like, like, how old are these guys meant to be? Because they're sniggering away. How about a blowjob? <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> so fucking funny. Like, they're 12-year-olds. Like, they've just learned the word blowjob. Well, I don't think they're like, you know, the popular, cool guys in town who've got their lives together. They're like mindless henchmen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And a fight breaks out, but luckily um, Bob is there. This, Bob? This big hunk of meat um, saves the he's day. He's a himbo, isn't he? He's a himbo, yes, absolutely. But he's very shy. Um he rescues Elvira, and she's she's very happy with this situation. She thinks he's going to walk her back to the hotel. She puckers her lips for a kiss outside, and he's just in his car and drives off. <laughs> he's just gone. I did actually laugh at that. I was like, what a fucking giga chad this man is. Yeah, man. Got this hunk, you know, this, this hot woman in front of him, and she's like... You know, puckering her lips, and he's just like, "See ya, poor Alvira." That very mean. He's, he's a gentleman. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't kiss on the first date or anything. No, or the second, or the third. <laughs> Maybe the twentieth. There'll be a, a peck on the cheek. Maybe. Um, but he is from this very morally uptight t- town, right? Yeah. You know, boys and girls aren't allowed to. To kiss in this town unless or have they're married. Fun. They're not allowed to have fun of no. any kind. No fun. No fun. I mean, if you're into bowling, you'll probably be fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, I, you know, like, so when we first saw the bowling alley and it said, what did it say? Paddy's. Di- like something like that. Yeah. I read it as like titty at first. So you thought you were, this right. was a titty bar. <laughs> I thought it was something, yeah, yeah. Like I thought that was the joke, mm. but then I saw, then I saw Paddy, and I'm like, wow, that's quite the, that's quite the pair, yeah. And I'm like, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I bet, yeah, yeah. Did you think that they were fakies? Well, I, her name's Paddy, so I'm like, oh, it's padded. Get it? She's got padded. Oh like- my god, you knew. I knew from the beginning. You Holy fucking shit. knew. I know. I was because because they like their you know their on the nose names. So it's like you're psychic, but only when it comes to like things that don't matter, <laughs> <laughs> like boobs. <laughs> boobs, boobs do apparently. matter. They do yes. matter. Yeah, it's the the funny thing about the bowling alley like set is that there's no bowling alleys anywhere, right? Um. We we never I've... see anyone bowling or any bowling alleys. Bowling no, 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 there is. All. No, no, there is. There is. There is. You see them behind the the sort of diner bit. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, that's okay. how bowling alleys are like laid out, right? You've got the bar eating section, and then like further in, it's the bowling alley. But they're definitely yeah. bowling behind them. Gotcha. Gotcha. I apologize. Um, As you should. We have the reading. We have the reading of the will. Um, her great aunt Morgana Talbot, who passed. The 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 driver and cleaner they get 
uh, five thousand dollars each, and and some extras thrown in. And Alvira inherits the house. Uh, her aunt's dog, Algonquin, and her book of recipes. Hmm, like a cookbook or something. It's probably not important. Um, but some dumb book. And her brother, that's Morgana's brother, uh, Alvira's great uncle, Vinny, or Vincent, he gets nothing. He gets fucking nothing. I think the it was phrased, and the rest of my estate, which consists of absolutely nothing else, goes to my brother, Vincent. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so a real kind of fuck you left in the, in the will towards her yeah, brother. Yeah, he's a twat. He's not very nice. But he wants that recipe book, and he he offers Elvira um, fifty bucks for it, and she agrees to this in principle. She needs I do money. love that she gets offered a house, and she's like, "Oh, I've been given nothing." It's like you've got a house, you got given a house. I mean, in today's, you know, like if somebody said, "Oh, you've today's got a house? economy," yeah, my god, I'd be like, "Oh, hell yeah, woo!" You know, she's like, "Oh, do you think I could?" She only realizes she could sell it. After a while, I guess. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't realize that you can, if you have something, you can sell that thing and get money in exchange. Whoa. That's right. She Even though. I understand. I think it was like, what, what is. What was it? 70000 $70, Yeah. Which is a hundred. I think I looked it up and it was like 180000 or something if you looked at like today's prices. Which is well, that's correct. just inflation, I guess. Yes. But the actual value of the house would be much, much more than that. Because yes. houses are worth a lot more. Especially in a lovely town such as Fallwell. Fallwell. Um, I want to call it Falwell. Fal- yeah. Falwell. But it isn't. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I also wrote... Um... Uh, there was a line where she says, "My name is Elvira, but you can call me tonight." That's <laughs> one of her like, classic Wait. lines. I fucking <laughs> love that. So this this house she's inherited it literally looks like the Adams family house, even more run down though. Um, from the outside, it looks terrible. Um, yeah. And we meet Algonquin, and pretty quickly she. Elvira decides to give him a makeover. I and fucking Al Gonquin love, becomes Gonk. I fucking love Al Gonquin. I love the first <laughs> Al Gonquin. I love the makeover Gonk. He's just such a fucking amazing boy. She makes him look uh, more like a punk, you know? Yeah. Got like a, a pink mohawk kind of thing. I don't think he's very keen on it. Well, I think initially he was a bit upset with this, but I think he grew to love his new appearance. What a bloody brilliant dog. And when Vinny comes round, he knocks on the door. Gonk grabs the recipe book and hides it. Smart boy. He's a clever little man. Smart dog. He doesn't want this book falling into the wrong hands. Um, Vinny, because Elvira can't find the book, he's quite upset. Um, quite animated. This book is obviously very important to him. And yes, um, there's a weird scene where it- Alvira goes to bed, right? I, uh, sorry, sorry to, to cut you off, but I just remember the scene before that where she said that she'll do it for 50 bucks. <laughs> and and oh, the, yeah. the fucking the women passing by were like, just, just so <laughs> appalled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leaning down, looking. Sure, into I'll the do it for fifty window. bucks. So they're like, "Oh yeah, my yeah, word!" Yeah. I was so gross though, because she put her fucking gum on the car window, and I was like, "What?" Because then it gets it back. Yeah, and I was keeps ugh. chewing on it. Nice. Oh, I was so rancid, dude. But yeah, sorry. Continue the 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 bed scene. Yeah, yeah. So she she puts a weird like a green face mask on her cucumber or something probably i don't know um and she she has her hair in some weird thing because she's got massive hair um and Mm. i guess she has to look after it when she sleeps oh yeah it's like wrapped in paper right it's wrapped in toilet roll it's just yeah yeah. (laughs) but there's there's the lads that are peeping in on her and it's like Mm. it's rain it's pissing it down with rain 
and they are trying to get a, a look at her gazongas, as they keep calling them, which I really yeah. enjoyed. I do enjoy stupid words for tits. Um, and <laughs> they get a Polaroid picture, and they were like, but they were like, oh, we were just here to, we wanted to help you do it with your house. And it's like pissing it down with rain, and it's the middle of the night. And she's like, yeah, just come back when there's more light, okay? <laughs> Like she doesn't, she doesn't tell him off. For, She's not bothered. She doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and she she has a weird dream about her aunt, and um, and she she wakes up, and Gonk is snuggled up next to her in bed. Little Gonk. <laughs> She's very cute, but she doesn't like it. I think she's allergic to dogs. She kind of sneezes a bit and stuff. What Elvira or the actual actor? Elvira? Oh. Maybe he just stinks. Maybe he do. Well, she gave him a bathies, so he can't be that bad, right? Dogs sometimes just stink all the time. Yeah, people too. Oh, I I forgot to mention there's that one floorboard in the living room that that flies up when you step on it in the wrong place. Oh, I yeah, love that. Yeah, she got slapped on the ass. Chekhov's floorboard. Chekhov's floorboard. <laughs> So the next morning, the, the, the teenage lads will show up with buckets of paint and, and paintbrushes ready to make over the house. And we get some good views of Elvira's butt and, and her cleavage when she's drinking lemonade and the condensation's running down the glass and dripping onto her boobs. And I am there thinking, how old are these kids? Like, because they're not 18, that maybe. Mm, no, I think they're like, yeah, maybe 16, 17, maybe so younger. She was basically been hitting on them. She's just living her life. She's not been hitting on them. Well, no, she said, She's which you big strong them. men will push my car to somewhere. Grab a tool yeah. and start banging. Yeah. <laughs> she's just, she's just, you know, putting them to work. Um, <laughs> Which is what women should do with men. Just have them go to work, die yep. for their country. Yep. Eat a hot kind of chip, thing. charge their phone. Exactly. Mm. Tell a lie. Um, Tell so a lie. yeah, she's very, <laughs> she's very inspirational um, <laughs> to these, these lads. And the end result is this multicolored monstrosity. Um, I don't think... I think they just grabbed random cans of paint and ate each kid... Painted a different part of the house, so it ended up all different colours. One of their dads runs the hardware store, so they got loads of paint. And she said, well, I wish they ran the bank <laughs> so that she could get loads of money, you see. <laughs> um, I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> she's also inspirational to the girls because there's Robin, who was told mm. off for wearing makeup. So this is... A th this is the, the granddaughter of the hotel owner. Yeah, and... Um, so she turns up there to help out, but she gets pulled away by the grandma. Everybody's really pissed off that Elvira is hanging out with children because she might teaching them sex education. She might start teaching them sex education, yeah. and giving out condoms, and yeah, you know that won't do. Telling yeah. them, telling them about abortions. Um, you know, you know, just... telling them that about atheism. Um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. How dare she? Uh, yeah, she's nothing like this town has ever seen. She's she's just a a force to be reckoned with. The kids have never seen anything like this before because they are bored out of their fucking minds. Yeah, because there's only the bowling alley. That's it. It's the only thing in town. And everyone just sits there looking bored all the time. Yeah, I think they the reason they're so depressed in that bowling alley is. Because they don't have Coca Cola there, they only have Pepsi. That's my theory. I do you love notice Pepsi. these tins of Pepsi? Actually, do you know what? I love the past tense Pepsi, but then they reduced oh. the amount of sugar in the Pepsi, and now it tastes like yeah. fucking shit. Honestly, I am I'm all for the sugar tax on on sodas and the reduction in sugar. If I, I want to buy, thing. if I want to buy full sugar pop. Right, and it costs more, but it's a little treat for me. I want to be able Sophie, to buy. Do you know what you 
Do you know what you can do? You can just add more sugar into it, like, is that, is like that the guy from the office. Is that how it works? That's not how it works. That's not how it works because basically then the, the, the nucleation sites on the sugar will cause it to fizz up way more and you'll just have flat pop and it'll be rubbish. Then just run it through a soda stream. Or, well, you shouldn't use soda stream because they built a factory on Palestinian land. Israeli Fuck them. Uh, so I'm, I've, do I that. hate soda stream now. But I just want to be able to buy something that has the full amount of sugar that doesn't have a chemical aftertaste of aspartame and sweeteners. It's just awful. Like, let me ruin my life. Please. You could get some imported. Get some I'm American gonna, soda imported. Bloody have to. Get some A and W root beer. Ooh. You know, treat yourself. Yeah. Why? What? Well, why don't you just have Coke? Well, I guess is Coke more sugary? I suppose. Or? I do have Coke sometimes. I'm, and here's the here's the kicker. I'm not supposed to have um, cola drinks. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? After I, after all of your ranting, <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm not supposed to have it. I'm not supposed to, but I have it like once every two weeks I'll have a Coca-Cola because my kidney stones will start popping off and they'll be real angry yeah, at me. They do do that, yeah. yeah. The caffeine oh. and sugar it excites them and they start bouncing around. Yeah. It's like a mento... A mento in there, and like as soon as I start drinking the coke, it starts fizzing, and <laughs> my kidneys explode. Kind of like Grandpa oh, Simpson Jesus. in that episode of The Simpsons where they wouldn't let him go for a wee wee. Um, oh no! And his so his his kidneys exploded, and Homer had to give him one, but he didn't want to, and he kept running away. And eventually, they, they did give Coward. him one. It's a goodie. Goody. They bonded. They bonded yeah. over that. He was very scared to give him his kidney, but in the end, yeah. <laughs> against his will, he did. Look, we're not talking about The Simpsons. We're talking well, about Elvira, maybe we should Mistress talk of about the, the Simpsons. <laughs> that could be a bonus episode one day, maybe. Oh, yeah. Get Lydia on to talk about The Simpsons, because she fucking loves oh, it. Oh, God. I think I watched oh, up God. until... Because I was doing like a watch of The Simpsons, and I watched up until... Season 10, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a couple more really good seasons after that, and then that's that's it, pretty much. Yeah, I've, it falls I've, off. That's, that's like the general consensus, that around like season 10-ish is like where it starts to, you know, yeah, drop off a little bit. You get more and more celebrity cameos that are just really unfunny. Mm. They had like Elon Musk on one of them, and it was just like, this is fucking uh... awful. Ew. Star of uh, Iron Man 2, Elon Musk. Oh, is that the new thing, is it? Like fucking Trump, star of Home Alone 2, we've got Elon <laughs> Musk. <laughs> Why is it always the second film? It's strange, Because they're second-rate duelists. Damn. With a third-rate deck? Is that how it goes? Dick. A th third-rate dick. To say it like an Australian G. Yeah, th second rate duelist Kiwi, with a third actually. rate. But deck. why are you saying it like a South African there? Uh, a dick Simon. insider? Dick. Oh my god. Alan, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, you can't. There's no <laughs> need for that. There's no need for that. Parotechnics. I can do. Parotechnics. Lean, I put my foot on a spike! The classic episode of Alan Partridge that we are now talking about that instead. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we have the, the council meeting and everyone's going off on about, you know, how bad an influence Elvira is. The principal of the school is like, if any of these kids are hanging out with her, they'll be expelled. Um, the, the council chairperson responds to someone calling Alvira like a like a hussy, I think, or something. Mm. She says this amazing line, please, I don't think we need to resort to name calling. I think what Calvin is trying to say is that this Alvira is a person of easy virtue, a purveyor of pulchitude, 
a one woman Sodom and Gomorrah, if you will. A slimy, <laughs> slithering succubus. A concubine. A streetwalker. A tramp. A slut. A cheap whore. <laughs> Uh, I like fantastic. your line delivery. It's yeah. good. A fantastic line. Just incredible. Uh, oh, and we get the uh, Jeff Conaway and his mate break into the house to try and get the recipe book, but they're terrible and the book's hidden by the dog. So that goes nowhere. Um, I heard G Star Games kissing a cat. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Oh, I got a very little. Baby. Which fuzzy baby have you got? I'm really jealous. I've got Ellie. 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 Pretty the good. fluffiest. Ellie B. Pretty good. Uh, we have the Bob's failing local cinema um, that only Aww. shows really boring shit. Of course, we have the How to Uck. Up on, oh, I love that. <laughs> up on the front, uh, with the the F has fallen down. Oh, um, a letter falls on Elvira's head, and Bob asks, "How's your head?" And then we get the "Haven't had any complaints yet" line. Classic, perfect. Um, Elvira has some movies in the back of her car. She just she just has them in the trunk of her car, and they'll do like a midnight screening, and that will save the cinema. That's the the big idea. Get all the kids watching uh, the worst movie, uh, which is it turns out uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, mm. as they pronounce it. Um, <laughs> Sounds great. Of course, we have the the scene where Alvaro is on top of the ladder and she's holding the 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 E, uh, but it looks like an F because she's holding it from the bottom and it's right next to the Uck of how to Uck. <laughs> so. Um, you know, the, the local council persons and Patsy just have like a, a little meltdown at seeing how to fuck up there. Very it's a offensive. Little bit, yeah. Uh, we discover Uncle Vinny has like a, a secret door in his office of with course. an elevator that leads down to a, it's a secret lair. It turns out he's a fucking warlock. Of course. He's looking for this thing called the Book of Sight. A, a spell book because he needs to perform a ritual during the lunar eclipse, which is like a week away, and mm. he will be the master of darkness. So that's quite a reveal, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Turns out the recipe book is actually a spell book. <gasps> Who would have thought? Dun, dun, dun. Elvira goes into the bowling alley to inform all the bored kids that there's going to be a, a midnight screening at the cinema. They're all sad, and because you know the the principal has said they'll be expelled, and and their their parents will disown them. If they hang out with this hussy. Um, <coughs> Alvira says that she's thinking of hanging herself in the oven, which is a <laughs> funny line. It's a very good line. Um, and then and then we have the the amazing amazing line of, uh, and if they ever ask about me. Tell them I was more than just a great set of boobs. <laughs> I was also an incredible pair of legs. <laughs> and tell them, tell them that I never turned down a friend. I never turned down a stranger for that matter. And tell them, tell them that when all is said and done, I only ask that people remember me by two simple words. Any two, as long as they're simple. <laughs> <laughs> and then she just breaks down in massive, dramatic tears. Um, and this inspires the kids to decide to go to the screening. Um, incredible. Fucking inc I, I stood they up and so I applauded. They are so fucking gullible, aren't they? They are, yeah. They, they fell for her, her wiles. They did. They really yeah. did. And, uh, oh, Al also, Alvira mentions that she's going to do a dance routine inspired, well, more like ripped off by Flashdance, mm -hmm. uh, where at the end she's just covered in gold dust, fully nude, presumably. No, no, not fully um, nude. She's well, just... in my head she is. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. 
so yeah, all the kids they they sneak out of their houses, you know, they 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 climb out of their bedroom windows and sneak away to this midnight screening. And you know, they're all canoodling and eating popcorn and laughing at Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Which is a terrible film. The sequel's mm. much funnier, obviously. Of course. Um, I love it. Yeah. FT, the fuzzy tomato. Maybe that will go on the list one day. Yeah, Who knows? maybe. Um, the yeah, we have the flash dance routine uh, at the end. Alvira is just, she's like lying on the couch, sort of lounging around, making her witty comments during the film as it's playing next to her, which is quite... A, that, I would go and see this. I would I go would and see too. this. I think this is... A, I think it's really good. It's a like, lot like what they do during the Captain Alex when it's showing in Ugandan cinema. Yes. Mm. We have the video jockey saying things. It's just the same setup, basically. Well, I put in my notes... Uh, uh, Booth is basically Elvira. If we do a live, another live yomp, uh, we need an audience, and we need to get Booth a fainting sofa with a boombox and a mic. The fact is that I have a fainting, I have a fainting couch, and I could probably dig out the boombox, but like it's a chaise long, right? Yeah, also known as I. It's no accident that I try to base my look as much as I possibly can of Elvira sometimes. I mean, look at that screenshot I posted. I That literally is she, you. Like, the, the fucking t-shirt. So, yeah. the, <laughs> like An Elvis the t-shirt. The roll on your head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the paper around her head. Iconic booth look. I, I, I love Elvira so much. Cassandra Peterson is fantastic anyway as well but mm. she's got such an interesting life story she does i've read a bit of trivia bits mm. is it weird that i thought that she was like that was her character like e- like in real life like that was that was her. her yeah no that's not weird it's like i it, but it's, no it's just a role she's playing she plays it so well and so she believably does. that I, I, it fooled me. <laughs> well, it doesn't take much to fool you, G, in, in fairness. Uh, very trusting gullible. and gullible, yes. Did you know it says gullible on your ceiling? It says it in the... Uh, in, no, that's not how it goes. It says it in the dictionary. <laughs> the dictionary. You were literally, she was literally going to say, it says gullible <laughs> in the dictionary because you forgot the joke. Yeah, she forgot yeah. the joke. It's, if you look up gullible in the dictionary, you'll see a picture of my face. Fuck's uh, sake. Unbelievable. Um, so yeah, she Elvira does the flash dance routine. Um, she does like somersaults and shit to the, the music from flash dance. And it comes to the final bit where she pulls the, the rope and the bucket empties the golden dust onto her. But Patty, the miserable bitch from the bowling alley who fancies Bob, she's replaced the golden glitter with with tar and feathers. Um, so, Is it yeah. a little bit overkill to potential? Like, she has her mouth open when she has the glitter coming. Like, she could die. She could fucking die there. Yeah, could have yeah, killed yeah. her. I think she was very lucky. Um, Alvira then has a nice bath, gets all the crap off of her. She is swearing nonstop and and cursing everyone in the town. Um, and then it cuts to downstairs, and Bob sat on the couch with um, Robin and her her new boyfriend guy. Mm. Um, because Robin did herself listening. up with makeup, you see. So yeah, that makes so her. Now she's got a man. Now she's attractive. That's all she needed. Yeah. So there's a moral for you there, kids. Um, maybe not the best one. Um, <laughs> Alvira basically gets the kids out of there. Says, you know, she wants to make a move on Bob. So the kids leave, and they're sat like on opposite sides of the couch, like as far away as possible as they could be. And Alvira like moves closer, but then something. Something 
is under her ass. She feels something there. It's the recipe book. And Bob, I think, is is too shy and uh, a coward when it comes to sex. And he's like, oh, I'm hungry. We should go out and get some food. There's a place on the freeway we can get. <laughs> and Elvira's like, no, this I gotta, I'll cook you something. I've got this, this cookbook. I'll cook you something. Elvira, Elvira thinks she's making a casserole, but she's making like some weird fucking... There's worms Potion. in it. Potion, yeah, she with was, live worms. She was genuinely going to feed this man that she fancies live worms <laughs> and like all sorts of other shit that she never I heard felt of. felt so Disgusting, unwell. Disgusting, mouldy crap. That yeah. She's like emptying these jars, all these weird name ingredients it's all right, that she's finding in all the she cupboards. Put spray cheese on it. And, and crushed uh, Doritos. So it's fine. The most American looking dish ever. Just crushed Doritos. Mm. And honestly, the, the canned. Whipped cheese, the freshest thing in that recipe. Ugh. So, <laughs> there you have it. Oh, so she serves up the casserole at the dinner table, and a horrifying, goopy monster comes out of the pot. Mm hmm. Um, a very weird looking, uh, lizardy kind of thing, a goblin y lizard thing comes out, but they, they manage to throw it down the garbage disposal. And Gonk takes the recipe book and runs off with it upstairs. Good boy. And there's this, there's this weird moment, which I think I understand, but I'm not sure I do. Alvira goes upstairs. She looks at a doorknob and she says deja vu to the camera. And I think this is a reference to a cause commercial she did where right. she would say deja vu. Right. And I think maybe the doorknob might be a dick joke. So she's making a dick joke and a reference to a commercial she was in in the eighties. Right. Okay. Well, isn't this isn't her? Isn't this a TV show or something? Mm -hmm. this, isn't this falling off from like a TV show that she had? So sometimes whenever there was a joke, I'd just be like, "Oh, it must be a reference or something." An I'll American thing. Yeah. Or an American thing. You know. It's an American thing. It's usually an American thing. Let us know, listeners, if you have any insight into into this joke. I think it's just as simple as a reference to a commercial she did and a doorknob penis. I don't know. Doorknob penis. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Gonk has led Elvira to a, a big sort of treasure chest, but it's just filled with a bunch of crap. It doesn't have gold in it. It's got a bunch of bones, a shrunken head. <laughs> I think I used to date this guy. <laughs> 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 and there's a note to Elvira that her great aunt has left for her. Um, when we get a little bit of backstory, there's a, a flashback which Elvira can see herself and she breaks the fourth wall a bit with. Um, essentially, Elvira is from a family of witches. Her mother was a witch and the author of this book. And Morgana wanted to protect the baby Elvira, presumably after the death of her mother, and left her at this orphanage with a magical necklace thing. Um, oh, you mean... Which is actually a ring. It was like a ring on a chain. But obviously she's a baby, so she can't wear a ring. You mean uh, um, baby Liza Minnelli? The fucking, like... Yeah, she's got... <laughs> she's got the hair, she's got the full makeup on... <laughs> As a baby, it's, so, it's weird looking. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> I love that. I forget it every time as well. <laughs> every time I forget that that's a that's a thing, and I just I crack up because it reminds me of something my mom would do. Oh. Oh. Uh, so yeah, Elvira now knows that this is a a book of spells, not a recipe book. Which I guess explains why she summoned a monster instead of making a an, an disgusting casserole. She tries to summon Moolah and she picks a spell, uh, reads it out and the lights will go out. And then she goes like, oh, Bob, oh, I think that was a love spell. And she's like touching something or being touched. It's hard to tell because it's so dark. But then Bob is behind her and lights a lantern. And we see that Elvira is fondling a snake. So she confused this large python for Bob's penis. <laughs> yeah, that was very 
weird. <laughs> weird. It's a fucking huge snake, uh, and it's. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's that... the way she speaks. She's like, oh, oh, Bob, <laughs> oh, yeah. And then the reveal of her touching a snake. Yeah, like it's mid so air and everything. Dumb. It's just like, <laughs> oh my god, good lord, it's amazing. Uh. Now it's time for the Fallwell Morality Club annual picnic. <laughs> and Elvira has left a dish for them to enjoy. The casserole. She's made another casserole uh, in the same blue casserole dish. So she's going to like prank them by having the monster pop out and attack them. Um, but it doesn't work. Uh, Chastity herself opens up the dish and it smells great. Uh, there's no horrible monster. It turns out that Alvira had like used up a bunch of the ingredients, and she had to replace replace them with like hamburger helper. Yeah. <laughs> so, so she's actually made a really tasty meal, um, and like everyone at the morality club enjoys a good help, you know, helping of this delicious casserole, and it starts to have an effect on people. It makes them feel kind of lightheaded and kind of like very friendly and also kind of horny. Um, (laughs) Everyone gets really horny, including Chastity in particular, because she has an extra helping. She like she sits on a guy's face. She killed. Did she did she murder somebody by sitting on their face? Oh, she could well have done. Uh they're all like taking their clothes off, dancing and and canoodling with each other. So Elvira definitely made something. Um, this aphrodisiac casserole. A a horny Patty is has got Bob, and she's trying to make out with him. And Elvira steps in and just punches the shit out of her. <laughs> just <laughs> just smacks her in the face. Patty goes down. I hate it when Chastity fucking put her finger in the casserole. Oh, it was honestly awful. She put her bare fucking finger in this casserole and then everybody else is eating it as well. But I just yeah. didn't. Yeah, I, I, like that made me so fucking angry. And then this was the eighties. It was fine. She. Right? It wasn't even just like the tip. It was like, uh, you know, scoop that out in there. Yeah. It was this in was there. pre-COVID, you know, anything. It's not even about went. COVID. It's fucking disgusting. People's <laughs> hands are filthy. Just wash your fucking hands, everybody. Yeah. Keep wash washing your hands, them. everyone. Chat, wash your hands. Wash your hands and wash your ass. <laughs> um, so, yeah, when she, when she smacks Patty in the face, her top comes off and it's revealed that she stuffs her bra G Star Games predicted this. It did. Um, mm. Amazing. Patty's boobs fake. And everyone boobs laughs at her. Fake. Boob fake. I was like really concerned that everyone was getting really horny with like loads of kids around. I'm like, this is a bit weird. There's children they... here. Yeah, yeah man. The kids, the kids were pushed to the back of the queue so they didn't get any of the horny casserole because they wanted oh, to eat. Oh, thank God. And they were like, they, they were like, where are your fucking manners, you pieces of shit? Yeah, you guys are and... acting like animals, and I'm yeah. Just like, oh. So they, they weren't were allowed acting to... like animals. So they weren't allowed to have any tasty, tasty. But they were still acting like fucking crazed degenerates near I think the these kids. kids and just, yeah, I think they just they all fucked off did the kids because you just don't <laughs> see them anymore. Yeah. So the the council they have another meeting, an emergency meeting. Um. The the creepy guy that um like sells tries to sell the house or something, that guy, he um he it's implied that he fucked a sheep in like a yeah. throwaway line. Which <laughs> like what the fuck? What the fuck? Um and everyone's very upset with what went down. Uh Vinny, Uncle Vincent, appears before the council and explains it was Alvira who is behind everything. Um, and that she obviously did some sort of conjuration on them. Oh, and by the way, these old laws from the time of Salem and the witch trials, they never got repealed. So you can actually arrest her for witchcraft. 
And they do. Immediately, uh, Elvira is in the next scene in jail, as well as Gonk. They arrested Gonk. He is a criminal. He is a criminal. What did he do? Well, because he's the familiar. But they don't know. Maybe they do know that. That's why they locked him up. Oh, bonk. Maybe Vincent, like, clued them into it and said, make Maybe. sure you lock up her dog as well. I mean, look at him. He's a little troublemaker. He looks like a little troublemaker. He's just a little guy. He's just a He's little just friendly a little man. Guy. I love him. Uh, of course, it is also the night of the lunar eclipse now. The stakes are pretty high. The stakes. Oh my god! Are I pretty... just, yeah, yeah, I just got it. Sorry. Hey! In the town square, they set up a stake surrounded by firewood to burn Alvira alive. And Alvira's like, "Why? Why are you so upset, Gonk?" And then we see that there's a smaller <laughs> stake <laughs> surrounded by firewood next Little to it. Little tiny stake. Oh. <laughs> They're gonna burn Gonk. They're gonna burn a dog. No, they're not, because Gonk shapeshifts into a rat with the same haircut. Oh my god. He's got the the white fur, the little pink Mohican, the little black hair bit on the side. Uh, And he just runs off. I love him. Um, A sweet little boy. Oh, Bob is going to save the day by retrieving the uh, the spell book, which will save them, I guess. Um, and there's the great moment where like Bob goes to run off and Alvira calls him back and then he goes to run off again. Alvira calls him back again. And then she says, and hurry, will you? <laughs> what the f- <laughs> um, the teenagers tried to help by, by breaking into her cell, but they break into the cell next to her and now they're all trapped in it. But at least they tried. At least, at they, least tried. they fucking tried. Um, Bob gets accosted, uh, knocked unconscious and tied up, so we can't get the book. But thankfully, Gonk returns. Uh, well, not doesn't return. Gonk finds him, turns himself into like a Rottweiler, and and bites the uh, the rope that's tying Bob up. The one that the Rottweiler that we saw in the flashback. Yeah, my ad. The old familiar. How Ooh. old is Gonk? Gonk is hundreds of years old. Well, there's magic involved, so he's probably an old boy. He's probably an old piece of shit. Alvira's led outside, and the whole town is there with, like, flaming torches and pitchforks, and they're yelling, burn the witch, burn the witch. And the cop asks Alvira, do you smoke? And she responds with, guess I'll find out soon enough. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Uh, the the sheriff is about to light the fire that Alvira is um, going to be burned alive, tied to the stake. And Patty stops him and says, "Stop, sheriff! What you're doing's wrong. It'll catch fast if you light it in several places." <laughs> I did like that. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Alvira's like Patty. <laughs> I did like that. That was funny. There's also a shot of a bunch of Girl Scouts with marshmallows on sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Just ready to, to enjoy a nice hot treat. Um, and then Alvira remembers the ring. It's the source of, of the power. It will protect her. She somehow manages to get like a hand loose, which, if you could do that, surely you're not actually tied properly to the stake and you can just escape. Well, I guess she can't escape. She's surrounded by the townspeople. But she gets this ring out and she shoots lightning up into the sky, which starts starts rain falling, and that puts out the fire. Yeah, which is really yeah. fortunate. Very unrealistic. Very. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the film, completely believable. But this one scene, I was like, oh, come on, come on. The the Earth's shadow begins to pass over the moon. The eclipse is starting. And Uncle Vinny has the book. So things are looking bad. And he looks bad. He looks real fucked up. He's getting worse as well. He's looking gross. He's got really cool robes on, but he looks like he's like a zombie, doesn't he? Yeah, he's getting 
he looks all gaunt and decaying almost. Um, I guess you you know his true age is kind of being revealed. Yeah, um, very Palpatine. This uh... yeah, yeah. I guess maybe this film was inspired by Palpatine. Oh, they they, they definitely Star Wars took some inspiration from from old Palpy. I put the pair mm. of the power of Grey Skull, and then he looks like Palpatine. <laughs> I have I have some trivia. So oh, I I own the DVD of this, and uh, I watched uh, a special bit on the side of um on the, the special you know the special features. And uh, so they were talking about, they had an interview with everybody about the casserole monster. And they were saying, well, you know, it's very similar. I think it invokes the chest burster scene. And they were talking about the makeup that they did on the guy. And they were saying, the guy that was doing the special effects, he worked on a load of other stuff as well. But he was saying, of course, if if you're inspired by something, then you want to sort of, take aspect of it from that and there were things in the cinema around the time like alien and there was beetlejuice that was being filmed at the same time and obviously there was things mm. like star wars so it's going to be super similar the, mm. so the the guys were really inspired by um films that were out at the time because they were just having a big a good laugh yeah well there you go yeah our uh uh would be master of darkness Vinny. Bumps into Chastity and a couple of other members of the council, and she and he says he calls them what swine, and then yeah. turns them into pigs. Yeah, which is a bit on the nose. Oh yeah, piggies. And there's there is trivia for this. Um, the it was it wasn't included in the full release of the film, but apparently someone arrives at Alvira's house and says that these council members haven't been seen since the night of the eclipse. And then a truck goes past that reads, <gasps> that reads Moline Bacon. We're hog wild on quality. Oh my so God. The, the implication is that the pigs have been loaded into the back of this lorry and they're going to be made into bacon. Oh, um, no. But apparently the spell wears off and they're in the back of the trailer completely, <laughs> completely naked. <laughs> And apparently on the Blu-ray, there are some stills of them half-nude in the back of the trailer that you can Ooh. enjoy. That's your thing. I didn't even bother to look for that. I'm going to have to go back and look at it now. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, and Vinny also throws Gonk into a fucking bin. Ooh. Just tosses him. My and it boy. slams shut. Alvira decides to use the, the, the ring on, on Vinny. And she she rolls a natural one. Um, <laughs> she she like reaches out with her hand. The ring flies off of her finger and onto Vinny's finger. <laughs> like <laughs> it's astonishing. I guess maybe it's just magic, you know. Definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, and then she has a costume change, and she appears like Rambo with a bazooka. Um, oh fires at Vinny. It does God. nothing. But she looks great. She does. The iconic look for her. I will agree. Yeah. Although I will say the fucking like the bazooka not working, but the heel working yeah. against. I was like, okay, sure. That's fine. They end up in a graveyard. Um, Vinny's cornered her, casts a spell at her, and she throws the high heel at his head. And it's just like Iron Sky. It just it lands in his head, mm. and that's got to hurt. Um, I think he even says something like that. He, I think he said that really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, and this is the scene where she escapes the graveyard by using her boobs to break the chain on the gate. Good scene. Iconic. Iconic. Very good. Ten out of ten. The lunar eclipse is at its full now. the The moon is entirely covered by the shadow of the earth, and Elvira's back home, but Jeff Conaway is there and he's got a knife. She grabs a bottle of, uh, sorry, a jar of leeches and throws them at him. And he's got these leeches all over his face. And he's like, ah! Yeah. Um, Brilliant. Fantastic. I love that shit. 
it's something I've seen so many times. Someone chucks something, and these horrible things are stuck to someone's face, and it's often leeches as well. Really, I think it's good. It's good home defense to have a, a jar of leeches just to use on an intruder. You know, mm. yeah, um, it's a good. Uh, you don't need like a dog or anything like that. Just a jar <laughs> no. of leeches. No. Elvira is grabbed by Vinny through the walls of uh, the wall of her house. Um, he, he's he's trying to strangle her, but luckily there's like an axe hanging on the wall, and all the shaking makes it come loose. And Vinny's hand is chopped off, and it's the hand that has the ring on as well. Oh yeah, we're in the end game now. Vinny uh, sets fire to the house. He's approaching Elvira, who's on the ground. The the disembodied hand is crawling towards her and he steps on the floorboard <laughs> and it, it whacks him and he drops the the magical spell book uh not cookbook. And the hand with the ring, Elvira manages to get the ring off of it, just in time to like deflect the not very good effects. Of the the pew pew lasery lightning oh, yeah. bolts. Well, he's also Looks like pretty bad breathing fire as well uh, out of yeah. his mouth, which is that's hilarious. not so bad. But the lasers and the lightning effects look a bit fucking jank. Um, and he also explodes into these weird multicolored lights. Um, yeah. So yeah, Vinny's gone. Uh, however, uh, Elvira's house is now ruined. It's it's burned to a crisp. She thinks about getting the book in a kind of like Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade moment. She's trying to reach for it, but then she hears her great aunt's voice. It's like, leave the fucking book behind. She should have just said that. It would have been funnier. <laughs> what are you doing? Run out of the house. It's on fire, you idiot. Um, I, I love how like when the kids were, this is going back to when they painted the house and they used all these very funky colours and she looked at what it. What a waste of time that was. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. But also, like, just, I did not expect her to go, oh, it's fabulous. Um, I expected her to fucking hate it. Which is why her character is so fascinating because she's not like a stereotypical, tropey, gothic, you know, like, she doesn't she's have... A, she's a well-rounded character. She is. She likes all sorts of. That's you know. a boob joke. That was a uh, boob joke. Well I get it. Sorry. Alvira is alive. So is Bob, and so is Gonk. They've all survived. And Alvira reveals that insurance doesn't cover damage due to demons. So. <laughs> yeah. I also can't take Bob seriously either because he's got that fucking neck brace on, and he sounds really <laughs> weird when he's talking. The poor guy. He's been through so much. Um, yeah. and the townsfolk approach and they've all got like shovels and pickaxes pickaxe and we sorry pickaxe <laughs> and we we think we think they're going to you know lynch Elvira but it turns out they're all really sorry for what they've done and they're here to repair her home isn't that heartwarming Very. um there's a really weird line <laughs> with the the dad saying you touched a part of my son that that no one has ever touched before. And the kid goes, I wish. <laughs> oh, He's a minor. I know. What are you doing? What's happening? It was a different time. <laughs> it was a different time. The townsfolk time. are all there to help. But, and then the mechanic shows up, driving Alvira's car. It's been repaired. And also, we have the news that because Uncle Vincent is dead, Alvira inherits his fortune now. And she can finally afford to go to Las Vegas and put on her show. Hooray! Yay! And then we have the the final scene of the film, which is Alvira's erotic spider-themed uh, Las Vegas routine, the song and dance. Uh, the it. song includes a rap verse, because yes. it was the 80s. <laughs> I love it. My name's Alvira, and I'm here to say I like to fuck in every way. That's what I wrote in my notes. That's very clever, yeah. Simon. When hip hop was like popular at the time, and yeah, uh, you know, mm. wanted to do a little, little rap, little hip hop. 
I love that. I love that she had, she had uh, some some black men around her to make sure that she was indeed very hip. Uh, mm-hmm. It like, like just just to cement that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Really drove it home the for I- me. The iconic scene where Elvira's wearing the the spider semi transparent bra with the nipple tassels. That she um, spins around, um, and we also see that Gonk is there watching, <laughs> <laughs> and she ends the film with her 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 famous her goodbye with unpleasant dreams. Just a bit of trivia here: um, the uh, the nipple tassel thing. Oh yeah, I read this. Uh, Cassandra Peterson learned how to do this when she was 14 years old. Kind of weird, champ. Working as a go-go dancer. Yeah. 14 years old. Yeah. Um, of course, she wasn't allowed to be on stage doing this with just pasties on. She had to have a bra um, made from an old bikini top. And yeah. 14 years old, she learned to do this. Yeah. 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 She's had an interesting life. An interesting life. Um, Oh, oh, this is the scene with the tarantula. I forgot about that. Yeah. That she kisses. Yeah. Um, Wow, smooches. So yeah, that was um, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. What a... What a strange film it is. What a fun, weird, cool film. Um, final thoughts. Um, as I said, this feels like just a perfect palate cleanser after a quite depressing film last week with the sad mm-hmm. ending. We now have this, this fun, funny, like I said, probably the funniest film we've watched on Yomp, at least for me. Um, Elvira is a character, one icon, an amazing, witty, funny, enjoyable, daft, incredible character. I love her so much. Um, I feel like the morality of the film is a bit fucking weird in places. Like, it's cool for Elvira to act slutty and have big boobs. But if you mislead people about having big boobs, but you actually are quite flat chested, that's bad. Like sure. with, that was strange. That was very strange. Um, uh... And also all the stuff with minors and a little bit odd. Doesn't well, uh... age too well in that way. Maybe it's just um, it's the fucking eighties, though. Like it was the eighties. Yeah, it's just so much. Yeah, there stuff- were much worse. Porkies, for example, the much worse. Porkies, much worse. Everyone involved in that film should be in prison. <laughs> um, so the thing with the kids, they were added into the script later because they didn't want it to just be loads of grown up. They wanted it to appeal to like younger audiences for some fucking right. reason. So to they're get like, teens yeah, get to some... go to the cinema to watch it. Get they have to be seen... in. scenes with teens in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scenes that makes for sense. Teens. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I, I applauded at the end of the film. I was like, very enjoyable. Thank you. Um, a solid eight point five out of ten. Have you had you seen this me. before? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, a solid film. Um, oh that's that's me done. Who wants to go next? Biff. I'll go next. Uh, yeah. So this is this. Is, I mean, this is a good enough film that I've got it on Blu-ray for starters. I fucking love it. I think it's great. I thought the jokes were. It was exactly what it needed to be, and the jokes were just like so stupid and like <laughs> there wasn't any outright swearing or like sexiness until the end where she got her tits out and spun them around (laughs) but um i love elvira i think she's just amazing and i give it a nine out of ten the story was bad but i like the film so what because i thought the story was absolute shite it's bad in the kind of like wink kind of way like it knows they they very self-aware 
Yeah, they they wanted to make a film and they just sort of like, well, it's really cliche and shit, but we know about it, so we're just going to might as well just go for it. And they did, and it's and I like it. Is there anything from your notes that you might want to add? Might be a good opportunity. Where was it? I wrote quite a few notes. Um, I I just I really love the dogs. I love Gonk. Oh um, yeah. That woman killed a man by fucking his face. Um, <laughs> Bob can barely read because he tries to worm worm. <laughs> he tries to read that that letter and he just can't fucking do it. Oh. Um, ever been punched so hard your tits fell off? Uh, director, make sure to show his weird eye some more. Because the guy had a glass eye. Yeah. yeah, was it a it's glass, a glass eye? eye? Yeah, I, I think that's just the act has it. You can't yeah. laugh at it. Um. Oh. And the kids put themselves in jail. They were just like there with the kids. They were just fucking yeah. shit. Um. Yeah, but it's, it's all smiles and uh, great. Everything's fixed. But the man uh, who fixed her car asked for sexual favours as payment because this was before she got the money. Okay. Uh, Maybe we can come to an arrangement. Wink. <laughs> winky, winky. So yeah, they, it, it was the, the story was stupid, but it was held together by the by the jokes, and that was the whole point of it. Yeah, it was just like a way to tell jokes, and I loved it, and I love it, and I love her, right. and the whole thing is. Cool. Nine out of ten. Hooray! I loved Hooray. it. Sophie loved it, and now G Star <laughs> Games <laughs> setting you up. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's good. It's fun. It's lighthearted. I like that kind of comedy. It's like wacky, but it didn't feel too wacky in some weird aspects. I don't know why. Like I do like the wacky a slapstick comedy and that like you know the sort of adams family type of film um with uh, horror um but it's like well, how did you describe it at the beginning where it's like horror but not like gross weird horror it's just like the fake mm. looking horror it has um, like the trappings of horror and like a like halloween yeah, in America, yeah, without yeah. actually being scary. Yeah, yeah, and I kind of like that. I I think that's fun and so enjoyable. Um, didn't border on too gross or anything. Only some sort of aspects of the film, but yeah, a lot of outstanding jokes. She's great. She's a joy to watch. Story was yeah, like whatever you know, mm. lackluster. But um, a lot of yeah, a lot of good moments. She is. Just obviously the star, even though yes, I know her name is is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, whatever. But she she owns it, and she really takes full control. And again, she was just such a joy to watch. Um, I'd probably give it like a, a six. It's an enjoyable film. Hmm. It's a I six. think that's that's, that's very that's fair. fair enough. But the but the, game. the plot was like yeah, just whatever. Just wacky. Just it was just there for the sake of being there. But I could watch her yeah. do anything. So yeah, same. Brilliant. Excellent. 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 Um, do you want some trivia? Hell yeah! I was gonna. I was gonna ask a question first. Go on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, what two simple words do you want people to remember you with? Um, <laughs> and if anyone says "come," they owe me a gifted sub on twitchtv Honey. Um, <laughs> any two, <laughs> any two. Yeah, just any two. I think those are those are my two, my two words. Any two. It's really hard to think, isn't it? Of what you would use brain. Have to use brain. I can't, I can't use brain. Use brain. Perfect. Thank I you. I don't know. Games. Like no, no. I was talking to Booth. Maybe perpetually mm. exhausted or filthy weeb. <laughs> Oh, filthy weeb suits you quite <sighs> okay. well, doesn't it? What about um, really shit? Really shit? No. Really boring. No. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I've got a headache. I've got a headache in my eye, so I'm trying to think of things. That's an um, eye ache. Oh, I don't know what it is. 
but it's crap. It's all right. We'll let you think about it. I'm going to think about it for for until next week. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> and we'll, okay. go, we'll go through I some think, triv. I think, yeah, because I wanted to tell you some triv, and I'll think about some triv while I'm going through this. Uh, they wanted Uncle Vinny was supposed to be played by Vincent Price, but unfortunately Jesus that fell Christ. through. And I would have loved it. And they 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 they, would, they chose either Vincent Price. The role was written for Vincent, or they were Damn. thinking Christopher Lee. And I was thinking. That would have elevated this film to a 10 out of 10 if either of those people had been in it. Because I fucking love those guys so much. And anything that I... I choose films to watch based on them two that are in it. And Peter Cushing. And, like, the classics, you know? That... that, that yeah. So good. It doesn't feel like that big a role for them, though. No. Know? Um, he's not but, really in the film that much. Well, he's in the film quite a bit. And it was like, um, they said, oh, she, she didn't know what happened. It, you know, maybe the money weren't good. He wasn't acting that much at the time. But then they got this guy in to do it. Vincent anyway. Price. He was in his, like, late 80s. Yeah, time, he was still like... acting a little bit, but not, like, yeah. lots and lots. Um, so, yeah, I think it, if, if they'd have been in it, it would have made that film perfect for me personally. Mm. Did you know that the then unknown Brad Pitt auditioned <laughs> to be one of the teenage boys? No way. But Cassandra Peterson thought he was too cute and felt Elvira wouldn't be interested in Bob if Brad Pitt was one of the teens. What? And in the casting notes for his audition, she wrote next to his name, Yum Yum. Monk she Earth. loved him. Matt and Brad Later Pitt. Later on. Yeah, yeah, you know where this is yeah. going. Brad Pitt would go on to purchase her gothic styled mansion in LA. <gasps> I'm not even being facetious right now. That's awesome. What did he Second. do with that? Did he just buy probably it? He just sold it a few years later for more money. That's mm. probably it. The painting of Elvira's great aunt Morgana Talbot is actually a painting of Cassandra Peterson without her makeup and black wig. I was going to say, because she's got, like, orange hair, right? So She's yeah, redhead. She, yeah. Um, and the portrait was painted by Robert Redding, who created the character of Elvira. Whoa! That's very cool. And the film is dedicated to his memory. Aww. Aww. Nice. Well, I guess Elvira was a creation of Cassandra and Robert. But, yeah, they work yeah. together, but it's nice, isn't it? That's sweet. There is a reason why the film didn't do great at the box office, which we'll get to. Okay. Um, but I'll bring it up now. Um, it was produced by NBC, and they had a distribution deal with New World Pictures, but just as it was about to hit theatres, New World filed for bankruptcy. So the marketing campaign was halted, and instead of the film being released in thousands of theatres, it was released in about 500. Oh, um, what? So without the promotion and without it being shown in a lot of cinemas, with the critics also being quite brutal about the film, it didn't do great at the box office. But it did do pretty good on video, and when it was aired on NBC's TV station... It was one of their highest rating programs of 1990. So damn, I was surprised. Kind of a second life. I was surprised when I saw the budget and box office, but then that doesn't take into account uh, the VHS sales and stuff. But yeah, yeah, that was still surprising because it was like budget 7.5 million, box office 5.5 million, and I was really surprised because I was like, surely. You know, if this is based on a show and she's iconic and it's, you know, people probably wanted this, like, mm. 5.5 million seems pretty low, you know what I mean? Yeah, but well, yeah. that's what happens when, you know... Greedy it's supposed to be in It's supposed to be in over 2,500 cinemas and it was in 500. So Sad, yeah. it? it could have made five times the money, <laughs> conceivably. Yeah, it's kind And then of... if, it, if they had kept doing the marketing for it, if that didn't just stop... Then it could have made even more. So 
could have been a massive hit, but yeah, sucks. Um, that does suck. Um, so on set injuries for this one. Oh god! So mm-hmm. during the scene, which our, our virus being burned at the stake, the heat from the flames was so intense that this melted Cassandra Peterson's black Elvira wig. <laughs> oh god! Good this lord! Is awful, isn't it? I know. Uh, the scene where she's getting burned at the stake took five days to shoot. Jesus. During these scenes, she spent three hours at a time tied to the stake. Uh, she was also covered in flame retardant for her protection, which made her itch like crazy. Uh, but she wasn't and able she to couldn't... scratch because her hands yeah. were tied. <laughs> oh, God. Also, she apparently had, um, she was violently ill with the flu during the last scene in the Las Vegas. Oh, my God. Oh, poor woman. Um, Jeez. Yeah. Oh, you wouldn't be That's able awful. to tell. She she fucking. Oh, she, it's so wild so to me good. whenever like, yeah, when when actors are like ill, right, and they have to film something while they're ill, and they just power through it, and you can't this tell. Like, like I, I I couldn't tell. I think about this sometimes, and I think, holy shit! Like, I personally could not be an actor in any shape yeah. or form because I am just fucking shit. <laughs> like, if I'm ill, I'm ill. I'm out. Bye. Fuck you. I ain't dealing with this. And I'm going to bed. And then you have people <laughs> that are just like suffering from dysentery that are like, what well, What did, uh, what did, what's his name have? You're going to have to be a bit more specific. Indiana Jones, <laughs> Harrison Ford oh. had fucking cholera. He had a dicky tummy. Or something. Cholera? He, was, I don't he, he had, had something really, Jesus. really bad. No, he had something like quite. He was he was sick bad. while he was filming one of the films, yeah. right? When they were like, like out I in think, the desert. I mean, Harrison Ford just has IBS, and okay. um, yeah, that's why he shot the guy instead Stop of doing. Stop projecting! Right. Whoa, it's a condition. <laughs> you just want everyone to have IBS so you feel better about it. Everyone should have. No. You, I want you to walk a mile in my shoes. But they're full of poo. No, <laughs> full of poo. shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck's fuck. sake! Um, Sophie, do you mm. think this would make a good video game? Alvira, mm. Mistress of the Dark. I'm so glad you asked me. Um, they certainly had a video game tied to this, but it was mm-hmm. nothing like the fucking story, was it? You remember it? Remember it? Well, they had to. Uh, you, I, you were playing it on stream mm-hmm. a few years back. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's a very so it's it's like your first person in a maze kind of thing, or yes. interacting with you know objects. Um, so, so it's like go north, go west. You in this first one that they made two video games um, that are Elvira tie-ins. The first one is. Um, you are Elvira's lover, her boyfriend, and she oh. is trapped in a a what was the fucking word? A castle, like a fortress, and mm. her aunt Imelda has um trapped her in there. And you've got to find her book and her ring and defeat enemies and do spells and shit and uh, rescue her, basically. And it's got a really janky sort of like um, uh, combat system, and but it is one of my favorite Amiga games of all fucking time. It's so good. Not a lot of competition though. Um, <laughs> Amiga games, dog shit in general. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, absolute fucking dog shit. Bad, but it's bad time for video games. Um, it's it's good because you 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 have to like pick things. It's like a it's like a dungeon crawler. It's, you've got to pick things up. Pick up the key. Use key unlock. And you can get you can get stuck oh, in the God. games because if you don't have something and you get murdered uh. by the death scenes are absolutely fantastic. I love them. Like when you die, they they've got some hellishly good art. Um, the sequel is I can't remember whether it's better. I think it is better. Uh, it's uh, the one where you're based on the l- the lot of the the studio, 
and you I can't remember the the purpose of this one, but you're the same guy going around and you have to like oh do a similar thing. Um, and you can go into her dressing room. Okay. So instead of playing Alvira, they're like, okay, so gamers, they're all young men. They don't mm. want to play as Alvira. No, they don't want to play as Alvira. They can play as Alvira's boyfriend and they have yeah. to rescue her. <laughs> yeah. Fucking uh, hell. So the, the second one is uh, The Jaws of Cerberus. And uh, oh. I, I really like it. Horror soft games in general, you cannot fucking go wrong. Yeah, so good. Uh, you've got to save Elvira again. She's been captured by the demon Cerberus who wants to use her magical power for his own aims. And uh, you've got to find her in the... Cerberus isn't the... a demon. It's just a dog. No, well, in this scene, he's a demon. Um, okay, right. And the props and movie sets have turned into actual monstrosities uh, because it was built on haunted ground. Oh, my God. Just where all those Native Americans were massacred. Yes. Exactly, because like there is actually, there's genuinely a Native American in the basement that you have to give fire water to. It's incredibly oh fucking racist God. in that sense. It's like, <laughs> you can say, you can say how to him. It's, it's really no. like, it's so horrible in that sense. They're just like, yeah, just put a Native American in it. Um, sure, sure, why not? But, it's, oh yeah, Christ the first on one, so this is, is actually a follow-on mistress of the dark uh, after the death of her evil uncle vincent alvaro has inherited kilbrigant castle and has restored it to its former glory and then oh. alvira inadvertently awakened a horde of monstrous followers of her distant ancestor the witch amelda and they've imprisoned That's her in the so castle cool. and uh preparing so playing it is like watching a sequel to alvira yes. mistress of the dark the film and wow. um, it's really good. And they use, you know, like um, they they use audio clips from the film in the video game. Oh shit! As well, um, and little, um, they they like digit they digitize the the a couple of scenes like and put them in the video game. It's so good. I love it. Like those games are top notch. They did have the arcade games as well, which were impossible. But uh, just can't be asked. They have to one. be difficult so people spend money. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they did do Waxworks as well, which was the spiritual successor. What? Uh, Dungeon Crawler, which was so similar. So, yeah, really recommend the horror soft video games for Elvira. So good. Okay. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. No, wait. We we have to roll to see what we're going to watch All next right, yeah. week. I'll remind people of what's on our lists. Have either of you changed your lists? No. no. Okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> my list is the guest. Uh, I have changed my second film <gasps> because Elvira. We watched. Um, Action Jackson. Fuck it out. Okay. And do you know why that is on there? Why? Um, because very sadly, um, at time of recording, Carl Weathers has Aww. passed Aww. through the veil to the other side. He's dead now. He died. He is very much fucking dead. Uh, so I added Action Jackson because I've not watched it. And it's a film I've known about, but I, it doesn't come up anywhere really like it's never on any like best like action movie lists i it never you never see it posted on forums or or on reddit or or anywhere it just seems to be a mostly forgotten film and i want to see if it's actually any good um so it's on the list action Okey-dokey. jackson uh johnny mnemonic murder ahoy krull and host the very short film it's on there it's like an hour long g's list Perfect Blue, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Sea of Love, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Do we still have Perfect Blue on there? We've kept it on there, yeah. Okay, did I miss something? Because it's good. Okay, fine. Sorry. We just decided to leave it there. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Shutter Island and Coraline. Uh, Sophie, you've got Labyrinth, The Hidden, Rafa's Wild at Heart. Every damn time. It's your latest edition. 
Total Recall and Cemetery Man, which I really want to watch, actually. Yeah. So those those are our lists, our 18 films. Uh, one of them will we, we will be watching next week. Um, Sophie, do you want to roll to see what number on each of our lists? Yes, I down? have the six-sided dice and I'm going to roll it. You can hear me shaking the dice, can't you? I'm really giving it a shake. Not really. Oh. It's a three. Don't hurt yourself. It's a three. So it will be either Johnny Mnemonic, Sea of Love, or Rafos. <laughs> we just want a... you to watch it so that Simon keeps <laughs> stop saying it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a one or a two will be me. A three or a four will be G. A five or a six will be Sophie. So give us that Let's roll. Let's give it a good. Hey. Can you not hear me shaking? Yeah. Okay, yeah, fine. I just want great. to make it. I'm. Um, there we go. It's a two. A two, which is Simon again. <gasps> Johnny Mnemonic. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fucking pog. What a film. What a fucking film. Uh, it's up there for me. Um, Keanu Reeves. Love him. <laughs> um, iconic film. Um. I, one of my favorite things about it is when they like mention any numbers in relation to like computing, um, like the storage space in his brain and how it's just horribly outdated. <laughs> uh, yeah. It also has a dolphin in it. Um, yeah. So this I'm is one that I, that I I have on video, but I've never watched it. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. I'll have to watch it on video for the full... The full deal. You're in for a treat. Um, that's a Johnny Mnemonic with Keanu Reeves. Say it louder. Um, Johnny Mnemonic starring Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> Summon him. We can do this. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Thanks for listening. Quick side note. Um, so somebody mentioned to me about uh, Letterboxd and how we should po- probably, or it would be a nice idea for all of us to have one. Booth obviously has one. Uh, mm. It is, I think, just... Isn't it just a massive spoiler for what we'll be covering? Well, you could always, um, like, update it after, after the episodes have gone out. Oh, Right. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. It could just. I will make a list. I will make a list on my letterbox of of movies that we've covered in Yomp. But if you guys want to, if you want to make a a letterbox each just for any other extra little bits that you do watch. I did make one. Why is this on the podcast? Oh, I don't know. Everyone, check out a letterbox that we haven't made yet. Sure. Um, We will have made it by the time it goes out, Simon. Will we? Probably. I made one. Okay. Right. <gasps> so I've just put, it's just G-Star Games, because that's how I'm always introduced, other than the Ever Fragrant. Uh, so it's not that. It Which just Ever Fragrant was actually, it wasn't available. It was taken. Yeah, yeah. it was taken. Oh, that's so sad. So I had to go with G-Star Games. But Booth has one. And I do. It's I will Booth. Just- it's just Booth. And I have followed mm-hmm. her. And it's oh, I've seen her Elvira review. B O U P H E. Correct. It's, it's not. It's not double O F. Um, I just no, think it'd a be a thing. nice little thing, <laughs> nice little added thing for people who want to see what other stuff we're watching alongside the reviews that we have given, or you know, the stuff on Yomp. Just yeah, because I watch. Nice I'm thing. trying to watch a film every day. Still, it's going pretty good. Uh, I watched Brain Donors the other night. It was recommended to me by somebody. This is one that Simon, I think, would really like. I'm not putting it on the list, but I am saying to Simon, you'd probably like Brain Donors. Is it Donors. Body Swap? No, it's not even anything to All do right. with brains. It's just about, it's Marx <laughs> Brothers uh, in the 90s. And it's got John Turturro, Mel Smith from Not the Nine O'Clock News, and some other guy that I forget who it is. And... Um, John Turturro is so fucking good in it. That is the saving grace because I I love John Turturro. Simon, you'd love it. I did not really enjoy okay. it other than that. But Simon likes his Marx Brothers, so. I do. 
Uh, it's produced by the Zucker Brothers. Yeah. So, mark of quality. Well, back then, it's um, not so much in late years. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. Um, just a little, a little recommendation for Simon there. Johnny Mnemonic. <laughs> that is okay. the one for next week. Yes. All right. Say goodbye, lads. Goodbye, lads. Good goodbye, lads. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Patreon shout-out segment of this episode. Where I, G Star Games, the ever fragrant, will read out a list of producers and Giga Yompers. Those of you who support us at the highest tier, we appreciate you so damn much. Thank you so much, Enki13, Bottle Gnomes, Scott5877, I'm a Robot, Luck33, SleepDIJ, and Lawrence Thibodeau. If you want to support us over on the Patreon at any tier, from the first to middle to highest, you can. But to get a shout out from either myself or the lovely Booth, it is a Giga Yomper tier that you are looking for. But thank you again for your support and we will catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.